My name is Tom Reardon, and welcome to the Cooking This Present. Today, I'm sitting with Kelly Turner, who's manager of media at Taco Bell. Prior to joining Yum Brands, Kelly worked across various account management, sales, and agency roles, including recent stops at Quibi and Midroll. And I'm super excited that she's here to join me today. Kelly, before we start, would you mind telling the audience just a little more about what you do at Taco Bell? Yeah, absolutely. I am part of the media and sponsorships team. So uh, we work hand in hand with our creative team and our agency to really bring the Taco Bell brand to life, whether it's featuring brand messaging, um, digital e-com loyalty messaging about our app or uh, limited time offers that we have going on. Our current product is the grilled cheese burrito. It's pretty delicious. Go give Yum. it a try. Um, we figure out the media strategy and we figure out how all of these different layers of our brand calendar come to life. Awesome. That sounds like a job that would make me really hungry. Uh, uh, thank you for that. <laughs> pretty tough to not eat Taco Bell anytime I'm in the office. <laughs> Uh, so thank you. For the format, we're going to cover four topics related to changes to the digital advertising landscape, along with getting your final word at the end. Our goal is simply to share with our audience some thoughts, uh, honest thoughts about, our, about these topics that many of our audience is facing themselves. So with that, let's start from a very human angle, the creep factor. As a consumer and as an advertiser, do you personally think internet tracking and targeting is a little bit creepy? Uh, I think it is one of the worst things about our industry, and I'm lucky enough to live in California where anytime I go to a new website, something pops up and says, do you want to accept these cookies? Do you want to turn off all tracking? I personally think it should be flipped and nothing should be tracked unless you are giving your explicit consent. So I am not a big fan of tracking. I always have everything turned off on every device in my home, including location services, any of that stuff. I'm just generally not a fan. And I think that there's a lot of room for improvement in that area. And then what about for um, your ad campaigns? Similarly, I know you guys lean heavily on the agency. You have a good amount of media spend mm -hmm. that you're putting, putting in market. Mm -hmm. um, are there ad tactics that you used to use that you don't use today or that you use less of? Um, you know, are you, or is the, the, the heartburns from that maybe still coming down the road? I think it's still coming. Um, I will say that as a brand, we are, we don't lean very heavily into like programmatic. We're not a big display mobile brand. We rely pretty heavily on social and a lot of our social tactics aren't targeted or even retargeted. They are really just like showing up against any adult 18 plus who happens to be on Instagram or TikTok at that time when we're showing the product. Right. The benefits of marketing towards consumers with mouths, as opposed to having to be uh, hyper-targeted with a lot of your audience. Exactly. Exactly. We want everyone in the country and in the world to know that these products are out. So right. yeah. not typically going after a smaller niche audience. Right. Okay. So that's, that's your short-term um, impact. Hasn't been too dramatic. You have a, a large budget. You're trying to reach a lot of people. But longer term, you are trying to get more value out of this app. Um, are when you think of your, or the app, and I should also say the remarketing that you talked about earlier, people mm -hmm. buy one, one thing, you want to serve them another thing. Those rely on IDs. Um, those rely on consent from consumers. Do you guys look at how you're managing that today and feel good about it? Do you feel like when, uh, you know, if I were to go buy a Taco Bell or, uh, or go buy a burrito, um, would I know <laughs> that I was opting into to marketing messaging? Or do you look at that as something you might need to, to clean up longer term? No, we have a whole team dedicated to that kind of customer care and making sure the way that brand safety is so important to us and where we show up. It's also very important to how we are using sales data from our consumers. So if you have um, an app account and you go in store and you put in your app account, it will track what you bought that day. But when you sign up for the app, there are a ton of legal disclaimers that are pretty easy to read, I will say, uh, in comparison that outline exactly what information we're tracking from you. And it's not demographic data. It is not location data. It is really just product focused. We want to know what our most loyal fans who have our app are hungry for, what they want more of. So that's how we're using the data. The data that we get from our consumers helps inform what our calendar is going to look like for the upcoming year. 
to say, we saw a huge demand for the breakfast quesadilla. We know that was only in market for six weeks. We're going to bring it back and maybe it's going to become a permanent item next year, or maybe it does better as a limited time offer. So we're going to stagger some of it, but that's really the crux of how we use the data. And we want to make sure that consumers know exactly what we're using from them and why and how it's being used. Well, it's like a perfect value exchange. Um, it's not just saying I want to market to you. It's saying I, I literally want to create the menu that satisfies what you're eating today and might want to eat in the future. So it feels like something consumers could really get excited about and almost want to give you their data for. Exactly. Exactly. It is, it's another way for us to listen to them and yep. to react appropriately. So that makes sense. So, yeah. so that being said, you are an industry expert. So let's go to our final word here. You are, you are an industry expert. You have thoughts beyond just Taco Bell's marketing. When you look at your, your pals at other brands or, or folks in the ad tech world, do you see an industry where you feel like people are behind on this um, and we need to start leaning in more? Do you think that there are other Taco Bells where uh, maybe they're not feeling quite as much pain as people might expect them to? Um, and maybe this is, a, is less of a problem. What, what sort of side do you think uh, the industry is really on? I think that there is a ton of room for improvement. I think in, as an industry, holistically, we rely way too heavily on cookies and targeting and getting that hyper-focused product messaging to an individual consumer. Um, and something that was really thought-provoking and inventful and kind of like pioneering this micro-marketing, if you will, 10 mm. years ago, it's like, we can do better, right? Of course, listen, if Nordstrom retargets me with a pair of boots, I was probably going to go buy them anyway, but I don't need those boots following me around to every single website that I go to for the next three weeks. It's just annoying. And it almost has the opposite effect. <laughs> like I want to go somewhere else. Now I want to see if I can find them cheaper somewhere else too. Going you know? back to that idea of protecting the brand earlier exactly. with how you're doing your advertising. Exactly. And I think that, listen, a lot of brands have to rely on some sort of targeting. And I think that's where you would provide an awesome solution because they are smaller, because they're trying, their products are focused on a more niche audience, right? Like you have to go after that specific consumer. I do think that there are plenty of large brands that are just trying to talk to the masses. But I think, especially with the boom of like direct to market or sorry, direct to consumer direct -to -consumer. brands. Yeah, yeah. Over the last five, seven years that I saw a lot at mid-roll with podcast advertising, like those are where they are looking for solutions to reach that specific audience that wants to buy Brooklyn and sheets or a pair of Allbirds shoes or whatever it may be. So I think it's personally, I think it's pretty split. I think it could, there's probably a ton of companies that this isn't the most vital to. There are also way more smaller companies that this is going to become really important to once the market actually shifts and finally does away with cookies and that type of like hyper targeting. Right. Yep. And if you're going to do that type of hyper targeting, you got to be mindful to how you do it. Like you're saying. Exactly. Because consumers are just getting more savvy, right? They're getting smarter. They have more places to voice their opinions on things and, you know, one bad day can really be detrimental to your brand. If an article comes out about some sort of creepy tracking that you're doing or targeting kids, you know, whatever it may be, there's such a, there's an opportunity for brands to shift their thinking and do this in a brand safe consumer first way versus what is just the easiest and most efficient for them. I think it's a perfect note to end on. So Great. Callie, thank you so much for joining me. Super appreciate you making time. Anytime. And to our audience, if you enjoyed this conversation, go ahead and follow me or click the subscriber bell on my profile. If you want to learn more about the fastest way to get the benefits of ditching cookies in your advertising, drop me a DM or head to sugarfreeadvertising.com. Thanks for tuning in.